Good morning. Please take your Bibles, turn to the book of Philippians chapter 2. Well, we made it through the first week of the new year, amen. Looking forward to some more, Lord willing. And uh, I'm sure it'll be interesting and tumultuous and uh, blessed and... um, Uh, hard and whatever it is amen we'll just take it as it comes take it with strides and so um, hopefully as we spoke the other night about uh, resolutions if we wanted to call it that or having a new year kind of plan that some have decided to go ahead and um, make it a point to read the bible or to study the bible Um, I don't know how many study the Bible, but uh, when you study the Bible, it's interesting. When you look in the Bible, it there are more verses that talk about meditating in the Bible and studying the Bible than there are that say to read the Bible. Now, does that mean we don't read, we shouldn't read the Bible? No, that means we should read the Bible, but we should also try to study the Bible or to meditate upon the Bible. One of the best ways I've found to study the Bible, and this comes from, uh, I'll be saved 20 years, uh, wow, <laughs> uh, September. And so, um, and I, I've made it a point to study the Bible, and I, I've had to study it in different capacities, and that of to teach it also. And so what I have found is um, uh, topical studies. When you do a topical study, what I mean by a topical study is you look at a doctrine or you look at a word um, or you look at a, a theme and you see what the Bible has to say about that. And so you're getting not only just a, a little glimpse, you're getting a, a greater view, an overall view of what the Bible has to say about that subject. And that helps broaden your knowledge concerning whatever it is you want to study. Uh, and there's many tools that we can use as uh, um, the Bible believers that want to study the Bible that men have spent lifetimes in, in developing and putting together, and, and we have them freely at our, our use, but many of us, we don't, we don't avail those resources, whether it's a concordance Maybe there's somebody that might not know what a concordance is. We, we should know what a concordance is. It's, it's, it's one of the great tools that you can use to study the Bible. It has every single word in the Bible, and it has it in order of where it's listed and where it's found. Uh, there's uh, even some study Bibles. Now, again, I'm not all for study Bibles that have a lot of notes uh, within the pages of the Scripture because oftentimes... Uh, it, you know, we, we want to see, well, what does this man have to say about what the Scripture has to say? I'm more of, let's see what the Scripture has to say about what the Scripture has to say. And so I'd rather use a resource like just cross-referencing those Scriptures instead of reading what somebody else has to say. Or uh, something like a, a Thompson Chain Bible. Maybe somebody might have one of those, and you can follow the, the chains and, and see what it has to say. Or, a, or a, there's a great resource. It's called Tori's Topical Textbook, where it, it, there's 20,000 verses of scripture that are all linked together and it talks about subjects and so why why am i saying all this because again if we want to to have a great new year we need to be in the bible and and just going in the morning time and and reading a chapter of scripture while i read my chapter and i put the bible away and then i don't open it back up again until the next morning if i happen to remember to read it the next morning am i really getting in the bible Am I really trying to understand God's will for my life? Am I really wanting to to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Because that only comes from spending time in the Word. We're not receiving revelations and visions. It's already been given. And it's right here in the Scriptures. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And so if I want to better my Christian life in this new year... I need to study the Bible. Well, how do I study the Bible? Sometimes we may take it for granted as teachers or preachers that people know how to study the Bible. But um, 
Uh, and so that's why I bring that out because I, I even find myself at times, if I'm not studying, I'm, I'm, I'm reading, but my mind's somewhere else. And that's very easy to happen, is it not? I mean, especially with all that's going on in the world today, I'm trying to read the scriptures this morning and my mind is thinking about this and that and the other and it's like, wait a second, did I even spend time with God? And so what I have found to be able to separate from some of those things and spend time with God is to actually uh, get myself into meditating upon the scriptures by studying the scriptures, by actually looking up verses or going from one place to another because then my focus is on that and it's not on something else. And so, amen, I don't know why I said all that. (laughs) Because this morning we have a topical study. And so what I mean by a topical study is that we're going to look at a theme or a a word in the Bible, and we're going to look at it from various aspects, and we're going to build it together to have a better understanding about it. And it's about the mind of man. Uh, Because God has given you control over something, amen, amen. There's a lot we don't have control over, but we do have control over our mind. And, and what we believe dictates our behavior. And so we need to be careful about what we believe because in the ultimate end result, it's how we're going to behave. If I behave one thing, I'm going to, or I mean, if I believe one thing, I'm going to behave that way. If I believe another, I'm going to behave that way. And so it's important what what type of mind we have. And the Bible has much to say about it. And I ask you to turn to Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 because Paul said this, let this mind be in you. So he he wants us to, to have some type of mind. Now again, this is a topical study. We're not just going to examine this one place. We're going to go throughout the scriptures and see in other areas where we can see where the Bible has something to say about the mind. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And then he breaks it down and he talks about the mind that was in Christ Jesus. This this selfless, sacrificial, humble mind that gave himself for us. But um, so, so this morning we're going to be flipping through the scriptures. Amen? And it's good to do that. In, in Sunday school, sometimes you want to be able to give information uh, um, at, at, a, at a rapid uh, pace and then other times you want to, to, to have more application to the message. Uh, but this morning, let's see how the Lord leads. All right, so let's go to Luke chapter 12. The first thing we want to look at is what I would call bad minds. <laughs> the minds that we shouldn't have. Or the minds, not that I say we shouldn't have, the minds that when we look at the scriptures and see the context that the scripture was written in, it's not, it, it's not shed in a good light. The first one is a doubtful mind, a doubtful mind. Luke 12 and verse 20, let's just start in 22. Let's get the whole context. And he said unto his disciples, therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. (laughs) Wow. What you shall eat, I worry about that all the time. (laughs) Neither for the body. What you shall put on, the life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn, and God feedeth them. Every day God feeds them, does he not? How much more are ye better than the fowls? And which of you, with taking thought, can add to his stature one cubit? If ye then be not able to do that thing which is least, okay, that's something very small for God to do, why take ye thought for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow, they toil not, they spin not, and yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothe the grass which is today in the field, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? Now we're going to connect the end of that verse with the next verse. And what, I'm sorry, and seek not ye what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, 
neither be ye of a doubtful mind. So there's a negative already connected with it. Neither be ye of a doubtful mind. Don't be like this. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after, and your Father knoweth that ye have need of these things. Amen. God knows what we have need of. God knows how to take care of us. Amen. We need not be of a doubtful mind and plague ourselves because then it will, remember, our belief will dictate our behavior. We're going to be no different than what? The nations of the world. And we're supposed to be different from them. We're not to have an agitated mind overly concerned with food and raiment and riches and all that's accompanied with uncertainty. We can face life with certainty because we have the scriptures and because we have a And it's, it's, it's a weariness. It's a weariness in the mind, and then it's a, it's, it's a weariness in the body. Is it not amazing how no external source can affect us at any given moment, but yet in our mind we can totally be plagued because of fear? Be not ye of a doubtful mind. That's, that's a bad mind to have. And what did he connect it with at the end of verse 28? Oh, ye of little faith. So that means I'm not exercising faith in God when I am of a doubtful mind. Now, this can happen, but we can rectify it, right? We don't want to be in a continual state of a doubtful mind. Look here in Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew 6. This is um, Jesus is speaking, the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, 6, and 7. A wonderful passage of Scripture, amen, to study. <clears throat> and look here what he says, very similar to what we just read, but he gives an answer. Matthew 6, starting in verse... Let's start in 21. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness. No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Here he goes on with where we picked up in Luke. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Now we're almost reading the same thing that we read in Luke, but we're, we're also getting just a different angle. That's going to help us more, amen? And that's why we like to study the Bible in this fashion where we, we can compare Scripture with Scripture. Verse 27, Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit to his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe ye? O ye of little faith. Therefore, because of this, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewith shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. Here's our answer. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. 
The things that we oftentimes are overly concerned about, if we just place our focus, remember the message of forget the things that which are behind and press towards the things which are before. If we keep our eyes focused on the prize, the Lord Jesus Christ, we're not going to be overly concerned with all of those things. And God's going to take care of us. Amen. He knows we need to eat. He knows we need shelter. He knows we need clothes. God will provide those things. Amen. But we need to make sure that we have the right mind. Look here back in Philippians, but let's go to Philippians 4. Philippians 4, because too often times individuals are so overly concerned and anxious about all these things. And it'll keep you from running the race. Because what about this? What about that? What about the other one? What about yeah. and, and, and your stomach starts turning, and, you're, and you get a headache, and you don't want to do anything. Because it all leads down a destructive path of becoming totally discouraged and depressed. Right. There's no hope, and there's no help. And Well, yes, the, yes there is. You're just looking in the wrong place. Amen. Philippians 4, look at verses... Uh, let's start in verse 6. Be careful for nothing. Now, we look that word up and it means anxious. Careful. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And because of this, And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and what? Minds through Christ Jesus. So if I but just remember faith, faith is acting in accordance with what the Bible says. If I just exercise faith in this verse of Scripture here that says I'm not to be anxious for these things, But I'm to pray and I'm to supplicate and I'm to give thanks for God because He's my Heavenly Father. He knows what I have need of. Remember, we're connecting these other verses now together. We're building something that will give us great confidence and encouragement in these days to come. I'm going to let my requests be made known unto God. And you know what? The peace of God. I'm going to have His peace then in my heart and in my mind. And I'm going to be kept. Amen. What a blessing. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Shall keep. Amen. I wrote down here that that's a military term. It means it will be guarded, like as a castle. It will be preserved from intrusion, from that that anxiousness and that fear. Because, you know, what? I need to build up some defense here. Because if I'm prone to a doubtful mind, then I need to come here and see... And the peace of God, which path us all, all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So if I'm doing the things that it says in verse 6, okay, then I'm going to get the benefits of verse 7. Does that make sense? Listen, the Bible always teaches precept promise. If I obey the precept, I obtain the promise. But I don't just obtain the promise without obeying the precept. So I must not be anxious. I mu- well, how, how do I not be anxious? <laughs> but prayer, supplication, thanksgiving. Amen? And I'm going to have that peace. And you know what? Shall keep. God's going to keep that heart and that mind. He's going to preserve it from all of those fears and anxiousness. Turn to Isaiah chapter 26. Let's move on. Isaiah 26. There's going to be some interesting times and days ahead that we are going to face. And we need to, we just need to be um, solid, amen? And and we need to know what we believe and why we believe it and who's in control. And, And if we do that, our belief will dictate our behavior. Okay, Isaiah 26. These are some great verses here. Three and four. Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. What a blessing. Amen? What a blessing. What is that telling me? 
I, I mean, it doesn't take a Bible scholar or a preacher or a teacher to have to exegete this passage of Scripture here. It's very simple. God's word is very simple for anyone to just understand, but we must by faith grab a hold of it. I'm going to be kept in perfect peace because I trust him. My mind stayed on him. I'm focused on him. I'm not con overly concerned and anxious with all of these other things that are going on because you know what? They come and go, but God remains. And oftentimes we're just so fearful about, of the morrow as Jesus was talking about and the things of the morrow that um, it overtakes us. False evidences appearing real. Fear, that's what it is. False evidences appearing real. Because this might not even come to pass, but yet I'm sitting here totally overly concerned about it. And I just wasted all of that time and energy, and, and now my body's broken and I'm sick because of it. And uh, it's amazing how the mind can affect the body. But it... But it says there, if my whose mind is stayed, if it's fixed, if my mind is fixed on him because of my faith in him, then I have the promise of that precept. I'm going to have perfect peace. And you know what? The world can be spinning and destroying itself. But you know what? I'm on a rock. I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm on a good, sure foundation, the Lord Jesus Christ. God knows. God cares. Amen. Just trust him. God is able to make all grace abound. His grace is sufficient, he says, and all things are going to work together for good. But it's according to his purpose, it says. His purpose. And we don't always know what his purpose is at any given moment in any given time. But if we trust him, he'll take us through. Amen. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? All things. Amen. So let's not have a doubtful mind. We, the Bible just has told us that it's not good. We can have a better mind, amen? But let's look at another one. Let's turn to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Um, by the way, I left my um, phone in my jacket pocket. Somebody just like at 10 minutes till, just kind of go, <laughs> let me know, Okay. Okay, this is another bad mind. This is a mind that we don't want to have. Romans 8 and verse 6. Well, let's start in verse 5. <clears throat> because we're gonna, we want it in its context. So we'll look at 5 through like 8. <clears throat> For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. Okay? Now, what does, it mean? What does carnal mean? Carnal. Well, when you, you, the Bible just explained it for us in verse 5. It's, it's flesh. It's, it's fleshly mind. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So he just drew a contrast there where, where I don't have to try to... Dig through the scriptures to try to figure out uh, the difference between the, these two because he's telling us right now. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Okay, so I want life and peace. So I want a spiritual mind. I don't want death. Verse 7, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can, it can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. That's interesting. When you hear that word, cannot please God. Does that, does that ring a bell? When you begin studying scripture, what, what does Hebrews 11.6 say? But without faith, it is impossible to please God. 
We talked about that just the other day. I want to please God, so then I need to have faith. Well, what doesn't please God? No faith. So then we can just come to the conclusion, because the Scriptures has taught us, so then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. So if I'm in the flesh, I'm not walking in faith. If, if I have a carnal mind, it's not of faith. Carnal is fleshly, to be fleshly minded, to be prone to sin, to, to lust in a bad way, to have sinful appetites and sinful desires, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, which is not of the Father, but is of the world. Not only that, verse 7 said there, uh, it's enmity against God. It means it's at war with God. Like, m my mind is now an enemy of God. And if my mind is an enemy of God, my belief will then dictate my behavior. And I'm going to do those things that will alienate me from God, will make me an enemy of God by being a friend of the world. The works of the flesh, Galatians 5 talks about these. What, the works of the flesh, oh flesh, carnal, carnal mind, fleshly mind. So all the works of the flesh, which are these, adultery, fornication, lasciviousness, and all those things he starts listing out there in Galatians 5, that comes from a carnal mind. And, and when we feed that flesh, it, it's just feeding that carnal mind even more. Because I'm not receiving the, the, the input that I need in my life. I'm getting it from the world. And, it, and it's affecting me. They that are friends of the world are enemies of God, James 4, 4. What does it say in Colossians chapter 1? Colossians 1 and verse 21. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians 1 verse 21. <clears throat> and you, he's speaking now to the, those uh, people in, in Colossae, those Christian believers, that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled. Amen? So Christians he's telling us, are not to have this kind of mind. We're not to be an enemy of God. We're not to um, uh, uh, partake of those things that, that would keep us an enemy of God out there in the world and, and all of those things. And go, go to Philippians. Philippians. So it's not good, amen, to have a carnal mind. And we see that the opposite is to be spiritually minded. That means we're to submit to the Spirit of God. And again, that's a whole study in and of itself of, you know, wh who am I going to yield to today? The flesh or the Spirit? Because as a Christian individual, now I have this battle. I have this war that's going to rage inside of me. And every day I'm going to submit to one or the other. And nobody makes that choice for me. I make that choice. You know, am I going to feed the flesh? Well, then the, the fleshly mind is going to take over. Or am I going to feed the spirit? If I feed the spirit, then the spiritual mind is going to take over. And many have used illustrations or examples. I've always liked the one of the dogs, you know. You got a black dog and you got a white dog. And, and the one that you're going to feed, who, who do you want to win the fight? Well, the one that you feed is going to win the fight. It's going to get stronger. Well, if we're feeding the flesh, it's getting stronger and it's going to tell that spirit no. But if you feed the spirit, it can tell the flesh no. I'm not going there. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to watch that. I'm not going to listen to that. I'm not going to think that way. I'm going to exercise faith in my God and I'm going to be an overcomer. Philippians 3 and verse 19 but understanding the context here. Verse 17, Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as ye. Have an example, I'm sorry, have us for an example. For many walk of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. Okay. Enemies of Christ. 
Verse 19, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. Who mind earthly things. Again, all, everything about the world and the earth, it's, it, it's not for Christ. The cares of this life, the deceitfulness of riches, the lusts of other things, what happens to that seed when it begins to grow, it gets choked. Because it's overly concerned about all of these things. Worldly Christians, professing Christians, those that are just entangled. Yes. But it doesn't have to be that way, amen? Right. Go, go to Colossians 3. We can, we can look up, amen? <laughs> if ye, verse 1, then be risen with Christ, if you've been saved, Seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. Take, take your mind. Let's lift the mind up, amen, to another level. We don't want the earthly mind. We don't want the carnal mind. I am crucified with Christ. Galatians 2.20 says, Titus 2.12 says that, that the grace of God teaches us some things. And so when, when we put it all together, we got this, we got a battle plan, amen. We got a, we got a map, we got something that we can work with to, to navigate through life as a Christian individual when everything is in chaos. Yes. <clears throat> So let's not be carnally minded. Turn to the book of James, chapter 1. James 1. The next one is a double mind. A double mind. A double means two. Something that's split. A, a divided mind. Uh, divided loyalties. No, no settled principle that anchors you because you go this way and you go this way. We see it in politics, don't we? <laughs> you may be control, controlled by those things that don't have you as a single mind. Double-minded individuals oftentimes are influenced by people. And not by the precepts. Because they're concerned about what others think. They're concerned about comparing themselves with others. What did we just read? Again, everything in this study just builds upon what we've already looked at. Jesus said you cannot serve two masters. That's not of faith. Look here, James 1 and verse <clears throat> 5. If any of you lack wisdom, that, that's me, that's you, that's probably all of us, amen? I mean, wisdom is the principal thing it says in the book of Proverbs that we're to try to attain after. Let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, freely he gives, and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith. This is important now because we're going to see that the double-minded man is not exercising faith. Isn't that interesting how it always comes back to faith? Faith. Amen. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. What does it mean to waver? That's this number here. Back and forth, back and forth. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Why? Because you're doubting God. Right. You're doubting His ability if you ask, but you really don't think that you, He's going to do it. Or you're just going to go through the motions. And Well, I'm just going to bow my head and pray because that's what I do. Well, I'm just, no. You can't waver. Let, that, let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. 
That's interesting because that opens it up even more. So if I'm double-minded, then that means I'm unstable. I am not on solid ground because I can move this way and I can move this way. What is anchoring me? It's not faith. I'm unstable, I'm undetermined, I'm wavering here and there, I'm uncertain, I'm, I'm trying to please two. How can you please two? It's hard to please one. Yes. I, I'm walking two ways. I'm saying two things. I'm going two places. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a double-minded man if that's what I'm doing. What was one of the the great condemnations from the Old Testament prophet is that he said, listen, you, you draw nigh with your mouth, but your heart is far from me. And Jesus said the same thing. He called them hypocrites and said, listen, you, you're, you're drawing nigh with your mouth and your lips. You're saying these great things, right. but your heart is far from me. Amen. You're double. Look at 1 Kings chapter 18. First Kings 18, this will be our last verse. <clears throat> Here, this is a great chapter of Scripture. This is the showdown on Mount Carmel between Elijah and the prophets of Baal and uh, Jezebel and, and fire coming down from heaven and, and just a great uh, manifestation of, of God's power and His ability uh, but look at what, what happens right before this. 1 Kings 18 and <clears throat> verse 21. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? How, how long are you going to live this way? How long are you going to let what you believe dictate how you behave and you're acting in accordance with what you believe? How long are you going to do that? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him, not a word. What, what is it going to be this morning, Christian? We'll, we'll close here, but what is it going to be? Are you going to get all in, amen, and go after God this year? Or is it going to be like last year, if that's what it was for you, and a wavering and a not, not a settled purpose and not a, a determination and a devotion to go after him and to exercise faith in him and to really enjoy the promises that the Bible has? Yes. They're, they're all for you, amen. but they're conditional upon your obedience. Yes. And so... We'll pick this up again next week, but let's stop there. So we looked at what? We looked at a doubtful mind. We looked at a carnal mind, and we looked at a double mind. And we've already seen the, the opposites of them by looking at the negatives. And so let's make it a point that I don't want those minds. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for the good word of God. Thank you for what it teaches us. I pray, Lord, that you would help us to uh, be all that we can be, that we can have the mind of Christ, and we can, by faith, believe everything that you have written for us, and that we can act in accordance with it. And this I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. You're dismissed.